I went to Kurdistan for the first time in 2011 and went along the Hamilton Road, uh, which is the road that goes from Erbil, the capital, up to Hadjomran, um, which is on the Iranian border. The plan was to go along to walk the Hamilton Road. It was built in 1928 by a, um, a New Zealand engineer called Archie Hamilton and he wrote a book called Road Through Kurdistan, uh, which is a fascinating account of his time building this road through um, very difficult terrain during a period where um, the British were just trying to keep control of the Kurdish tribes and so on. And so it was quite a dangerous project at the time. And he wrote this really interesting account. The whole idea was just to meet people and just to talk to them. I mean, people were just, were, were just so friendly and so kind and would just do anything for us. For a very long time, there's, there's been horrendous conflict there. So it's not a safe place for, for foreigners to go, not a safe place for anyone to be at the moment, certainly. The Iraqi army attacked uh, the Iraqi military camp from Mosul and Baghdad to Erbil. We ran away to Iran. Yeah. Step by step, we to Iran by walking. The thing that really amazed me was, um, was the fact that this is a place that has suffered so much in the, in, in the recent past. There's been war in Iraqi Kurdistan since the 1960s. 5,000 villages were destroyed, bulldozed or bombed to the ground. I think there is that kind of bewilderment. Why are the British and the Americans so confused and almost ashamed of having liberated us? Well, I think if, if the British and the Americans and others really understood what happened in Iraq under Saddam, they would realize it was a liberation. But I wanted to talk about how they'd overcome that, how Kurdistan now was like an exciting place to be and, uh, and a place that had a really bright and vibrant future. And when I visited there in 2013, um, the people there were going through a period of uh, real opportunity. Um, finally, there was peace and prosperity in the region and, there, and, and things were developing, the economy was developing and there was a real sense of optimism among the people. And so it felt like this was a really unique uh, time for the Kurdish people. It's really distressing to hear how, uh, how things have moved, moved backward in the region. There are huge challenges to face and, and Kurdistan is by no means it's completely safe from, from the ISIS advance. So now we want to go back and try to find our friends and find out how, how all this is affecting them, how having 1.4 million refugees come into their land is, is affecting them day to day and, and find out really from a Kurdish perspective, from a grassroots perspective, how, uh, how this enormous conflict which has taken the whole world by surprise has affected these people.